Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make school supplies for your stuffed animals. I did do a school supplies video a long time ago, but I figured that since it's back to school season, I might as well make some more things that you have been requesting. Now let's get started! I'm going to start out with the easiest one, and that is this little composition notebook. I want the inside to be lined, so I grabbed some loose notebook paper. And I have about three sheets here, and now I'm going to fold this kind of into thirds. But you really want to just fold this to however wide you want the notebook to be. Next, I'm going to cut along this edge because all I want is the folded part. Then I can start cutting it to the right height. I kept using the first one as a guide, so they were all the same size. I got three of these out of that one piece of paper, but that was enough for me, so now I'm just kind of putting them within each other and straightening up the sides so nothing's sticking out. Now to make the cover, I have this piece of scrap of paper, it's pretty thick, and it's got this green houndstooth pattern which I thought was really cute, so I decided to use this, but you could use any kind of paper and even decorate it at the end if you want. I'm adding that pack of notebook paper inside the scrapbook paper and folding it around it, and I'm making sure to leave a little border around the outside and then trimming it to the right size. And now to give it the composition notebook look, I'm rounding the corners of the cover. And now to assemble this, I'm gonna just place the notebook paper inside and open it up to the middle of the notebook paper and then staple right in that fold. It definitely took me a few tries to get it right in the middle. This first one I just kept messing up, so I just moved on to the second one and did that one perfectly. But it's okay if it's not perfect because we'll be covering those staples. I'm going to be covering that edge with some pink washi tape since I think pink and green are just a great combination, but if you don't have colored tape, you can always just use regular paper and glue it on. And after centering it the best I can, I can just fold it over the spine and trim off the excess. And now the last thing I'm going to do is add a label to the cover. I'm laying down some washi tape first so it has a little border that matches the spine, and then after some trial and error, I got the perfect size for the white part and could glue that on there. And now I gotta label the subject for this to stay organized, and I was originally gonna just write bio since it's really short, but I started a little too far to the left, so I just wrote out biology. And now this composition notebook is done. I feel like I elevated it a little bit with the style and colors, and it technically is a real notebook you could write stuff in. You'll of course need a pencil, but I showed you how to make this in my last school supplies video, so I'll link that down below. Speaking of pencils, the next thing I'm gonna make is a pencil pouch. I'm making this out of fabric, but I wanted to keep it super simple so there's no zipper or really any sewing required. I'm starting out with a rectangle about nine inches long by three and a quarter inches wide. And the first thing I'm gonna do is flip this over and fold in the long sides to meet in the center. And I actually decided to not have them meet exactly in the center. I wanted them to overlap just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna flip that over and fold in the long sides again to the center. And like before, I want them to overlap about a quarter of an inch. And you can make this whatever size you want, so if you make this a lot bigger, you'll want it to overlap more. Now, pretty much the last step is to sew or glue close these top and bottom edges. I'm going to sew it since it's faster for me, but if you use glue, make sure to glue together all those layers because there are a lot of them and you don't want any holes. After that, this is how it'll look. There will be some raw edges on the back, but that's okay because now I'm going to turn this inside out. I'm pressing out those corners the best that I can, but I do kind of like that soft look because it is a pouch. And now this is ready to add our pencils and other school supplies. I actually filmed the whiteboard markers part of the video before this, so I had some ready to add, but you'll see how to make those in a little bit. The overlapping fabric in the front is pretty much what keeps this closed since we didn't use any zippers or fasteners, but I did a little shake test and nothing came out, so I think it worked. This is a pretty plain design though, so you could always add some ribbon to the edges to dress it up, or add a little loop of ribbon at the corners to add a little handle. I'm not sure if that's a thing or if I'm just thinking of wallets. But yeah, that's it for making this pencil pouch. The last group of items I'm making are a whiteboard, markers, and eraser. Not sure if this really counts as school supplies, but someone's been requesting this for a long time, so I wanted to make it. This whiteboard really works and is easy to make, so I'm starting by taking a rectangle of corrugated cardboard, and that's just so it's a little bit thicker and sturdier. And even though one side of this is already white, I want to get it really smooth and clean, so I'm going to first cover it with some printer paper. And I'm leaving a border around the outside so I can fold over the edges. I cut out little squares at the corners to help fold them over easier. But after one side is completely covered, I should just have a nice clean background for the whiteboard. 
And now to make this actually look like a whiteboard, I'm gonna cover this with some clear packing tape. You could also cut out a piece of clear plastic from packaging, but I thought this packing tape idea was easier. And since it's really thick, I only had to do two separate pieces, but if you use regular tape, you just have to use more. For the second piece, I wanted them to overlap just a tiny bit so it wasn't as noticeable, and I think I did a pretty good job of that. When writing on this with dry erase marker though, I'd avoid going in between because when I erased it, I think it kind of got caught around the edge of the tape. Not sure if that really makes sense, but you'll see later. Next, I wanted to give this a black border since I feel like most whiteboards have that, and I first attempted to do it with some acrylic paint, but that would need a ton of coats to get fully opaque, so I just decided to use tape. But before I do that, I wanted to add a little ledge at the bottom for the markers and erasers, so I'm taking a popsicle stick and cutting off the ends so it's the perfect size, and then I'm painting it black to match the border of the whiteboard. But now to add the actual whiteboard, I found some black electrical tape just sitting around, so I figured that'd be a lot easier than painting. So I'm just gonna add this to the sides and top edge of the whiteboard. This is kind of tricky to get perfectly even. For some reason, mine ended up a little bit curved, but I just left it like that. And for the sides, I ended up making the border a little more narrow. I don't think I did that on purpose, but I at least got the sides to be a similar thickness, so I was just happy with that. But now that ledge piece I painted is dry, so I'm gonna glue this onto the bottom using hot glue. Sorry the camera was not focusing on what I was actually doing, but you get the idea. And I also added some glue at the bottom to reinforce it. And with that, the whiteboard is pretty much done, but I'm still gonna make some markers and an eraser to go along with it. So to make the markers, here I have a strip of paper that I've already cut to about one and three quarter inches. And this is similar to how I made the pencils in the last video. So I'm basically taking a toothpick and rolling the paper around it. It's kind of hard to get started, but once you do, you want to try to roll this up as straight as possible, or else you'll start seeing the edges pile on top of each other, which happens sometimes. This definitely happened to me, and it's not a big deal. But after only rolling up a few inches, it was starting to look to be the thickness I wanted it to be, since I'm trying to go for those skinny expo markers. So that's where I cut it off. But this is still going to get a little bit thicker because next, I'm going to take that strip of paper and trim off probably like a millimeter off the side, very tiny amount. But now I'm going to start wrapping this around the outside, making sure to line it up with one of the edges. And after about an inch of rolling, I just cut it off. But at this point, you can roll it to whatever thickness you want. I'm adding some glue along that edge to really seal it in. At this point, I noticed that the paper was able to slide up and down the toothpick, and I wanted it all to just be one piece, so I added some glue in there to hold it together. And then I trimmed off the pointy ends sticking out. Now pretty much the base of the marker is done and all I need to do is add the color. So I'm gonna do a red one first and I had this red origami paper that is perfect for this because it's bright red on one side. And so to make the cap, I'm just cutting a thin strip of this and wrapping it around the top. And instead of paper, you could always just color this in with marker or paint it or something. I'm not the best at painting straight lines though, so this was definitely easier for me. And I'm gonna cut out one more rectangle to be a little label in the center. I didn't end up writing a brand name or anything, but I think it looks pretty realistic, just blank like this. And now this dry erase marker is pretty much done. One more thing I did later though was add a little red paint to the top and white to the bottom to kind of hide the edges of the toothpick and paper. But now the last thing for this little bundle is the eraser. I already cut out a little rectangle of felt the size I want the eraser to be, and it's a coincidence that it's just like the perfect color for this. But for the main part of the eraser, I'm gonna be using styrofoam from packaging. And it was pretty lucky I had this because I think those kinds of erasers I'm going for are made of styrofoam. But now I can just cut this to the same size as the felt and paint the styrofoam gray to look more like one of those erasers. After doing only about one coat of paint and it not being fully dry, I just decided to glue this together since my hot glue gun had been on for a while. And that is basically it to make this eraser. I was looking at this little gray block though and thinking, this is pretty ugly. So later on, I ended up dry brushing this with a little bit of black to give it more dimension and look more like those erasers. And I think it definitely looked better. I do remember spotting it from across the room and thinking, that's an eraser. So I think I did a pretty good job. Here are the finished markers too with the tops painted. I also did a black one and I wanted to test out the whiteboard to prove that it really works. Also, the marker I'm writing with is what I was going for when making these markers. But hey, the whiteboard and eraser worked the way it was supposed to, so I'm happy about that. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks again to the people who requested these things. Make sure to comment down below if you have any suggestions. 
and please give this video a like and subscribe to support my channel. And to everyone who is going back to school or just started, good luck. I hope you have a great year, and if you're one of those people like me that didn't really like school, it gets better. I'll see you next time. Bye!